So I saw on the Arachnus Integrators Group Facebook page, someone asking how to create an SSID in separate VLANs using Arachnus products. So after providing a little bit of advice, I went to YouTube and saw there wasn't many videos on how to do this. Let's jump straight in. The products I'm using are an Arachnus AN310 router, an Arachnus AN210 8 port PoE switch, and a package WA2200 wireless access point. The protocols I'm going to show and the configurations are pretty universal to managed routing and switching devices. So the best practice when setting up a new network after making the physical connections is changing the default admin credentials, set the time zone and update the device's firmware. So first, let's create the VLAN in the router. So in the router, I'll go to advanced and VLANs. So VLAN 1 is by default the untagged management LAN. I have the option to add a VLAN, so I'll add a couple. I'll create VLAN 20 and VLAN 30, and I'll call those accounts and HR respectively. You can only have one untagged VLAN on a LAN port. So if I try and set another port to be an untagged VLAN port, it'll give me an error message. So I'll just save the configuration. And it does a 20 second countdown so i'll just speed this up for the purposes of the time now if i go to settings and lan i can see the dhcp server settings are populated with the vlans i've just created on vlan 20 i'll enable the dhcp server and leave it as the default dhcp scope range values i press save config saves If I then go to VLAN 30 and do the same, but this time I'll change the subnet mask to a 29 side notation. So you'll see once I enable the DHCP mode to server, it automatically configures the IP range relevant to that subnet mask. So I'll have six host device addresses available in that subnet range. So I've got three VLANs and each VLAN is showing the gateway IP address and how many host addresses are available in the DHCP pool. The next moving on to the switch, if I go to VLANs under the settings option and create the VLANs within there. So the default VLAN is one, I'll add two extras to match the ones I configured in the router. And I'll give them an ID and a name. So accounts with the VLAN tag of 20 and HR VLAN tag of 30. I now need to set the access port and the trunk ports. Access ports are ports that are assigned to a single VLAN. Devices connected to an assigned access port will only receive traffic corresponding to that VLAN. My laptop is connected to port 2 on this switch and by default port 2 is set to an access port on the native VLAN 1 so I only have access to devices within that VLAN 1. The trunk is an assigned port that passes traffic containing tagged and untagged VLAN information in the Ethernet frame. Once the frame is sent to a VLAN aware device such as this layer 2 switch, the frame is stripped down and the traffic is sent to the correct access port based on its MAC address being cross-referenced from the switch's MAC address table. If the Ethernet frame does not contain a tag, it's sent to the native VLAN, which in this case is VLAN 1. So if we want to have a wireless access point configured to broadcast different SSIDs, and when a host device connects to a particular SSID, they're assigned to a certain VLAN subnet. We then need to configure the switch ports that the access points are physically connected to, to a trunk. Wireless access points operate at layer 2 of the OSI model and operate based on MAC addresses to direct traffic. When the traffic traverses the trunk links to the WAP, the WAP will strip away at the Ethernet frame and direct tagged or untagged VLAN traffic based on its MAC address table to the device associated to the SSID it's connected to. So moving on to setting up the wireless access points. In the SSID setup menu, I'll add three SSIDs, General, Accounts, and HR. Then I'll give it the relevant authentication method, which is WPA2, set a password, then assign a VLAN tag value to the SSIDs. 20 and HR. Tag of 30. And that's it. So I'll save the configuration and connect to the SSIDs that are broadcasting and see what IP addresses I get. On my mobile device, if I connect to accounts, I'm given an IP address in the 20 range. My laptop is connected to an access port on VLAN 1, the native VLAN. So if I ping the mobile host IP address, I'll get a timeout. <laughs> Back 
my mobile device if I connect to HR. I'm given an IP address in the 30 range. Again, if I do a ping to that host from my laptop on the native VLAN, I get a timeout. This shows that the hosts are residing within the VLANs and they're completely isolated from the other networks. If I did want VLAN 30 to be able to communicate with the native VLAN 1 or vice versa, if I go back to the router and enable interlan routing, I can now ping the host device on the HR network. If a company had a central server on a VLAN, this would be a way to be able to access that resource from another LAN. 